Hey guys, e 2 here, and welcome back to another video. Now today, I'm going to bring you guys a bit of a different video. Uh, I've not done many trading videos for a while, but today I've got another one. I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the best possible start on FIFA 17 Ultimate Team. I'm going to be showing you guys trading tips, the methods you want to use, and also a couple of different interesting things you can do, which a lot of people haven't mentioned. Now, I've seen quite a few videos on how to prepare for FIFA 17, and quite a few of these things, as I said, have not been included. That includes some really, really good ways of getting free coins without even having to play games or trade, uh, as well as some cool new things that are actually on FIFA 17, which we haven't had on previous FIFAs, that will also help you make some easy coins. Now, the first tip I'm going to be giving you guys is one that I've hardly seen anyone really mention in these types of videos. A lot of people say not to do this. However, I've done this on previous FIFAs, and I've managed to make myself a lot of coins. So what you are going to want to do is actually build a cheap start team on the web app. Now, a lot of people say just trade on the web app, and you don't really want to kind of uh, build a team to actually play with. But uh, in my opinion, it's definitely the best thing to do because if you have EA access especially, it doesn't matter if you don't, but if you do have EA access, you can uh, play a bit more because you can play earlier. Um, but if you do build your stuff team, you can use that and actually manage to play uh, a lot of games of like Starter Cup, Offline Foot Draft, not that you do need your start team for that. Uh, but uh, Starter Cup is one I definitely recommend as well as the uh, Offline Seasons. I wouldn't really recommend going into online games. Um, because you will probably not have the best of records because you won't have the best of teams. You don't really want to be starting off FIFA 17 badly really when it comes to divisions. Uh, so yeah, I recommend playing a starter cup and games like that with a coin boost on. If you go to the catalogue and uh, enable the coin boost, if you're a high enough level, you'll be getting like a thousand coins for every single game you play uh, for uh, like 50 games or so, so you can get a ton of coins. Uh, at the beginning of FIFA 15, I actually managed to make 200,000 coins in the first week of the game. Just by playing games, I used the coin boosts and I played um, offline cups and I played the offline seasons. It's just so, so easy. You make a ton of coins doing that. And building a cheap start team on the web app is great because the player price is going to be really low. I will be doing a video on a squad builder for you guys to use and I'll try and put a link in the description to this video when I upload that video. That will come out once the full game comes out. But you guys can maybe come back and check out the video uh, or maybe just see the squad builder on my channel because I'll do a cheap one for you guys to get probably around 10,000 coins. And you want to use that to play Starter Cup, uh, Offline Divisions, and uh, any other kind of offline cups and stuff like that that you can play with the coin boost. And you just want to keep playing, score a couple of goals on an easy difficulty, and then leave your control or maybe do something else. And you'll just get a ton of coins from just playing the games. You'll get the match coins and also the coins from the coin boost. So moving on to the first trading method I'm going to be showing you guys. This is one I used a lot at the beginning of FIFA 16 on the web app. And basically, you want to go to silver and you want to put the maximum price to 200 coins uh, like this. And then you want to go to a good nation or a good league. So I did it with Brazil. And you will probably see a video of that on my channel if you were um, kind of a, a long-term subscriber. You will have seen this. It was a method I used a lot at the beginning of the game. And you just want to look for players who look decent. Uh, if there is, for example, a new league, this works with the Brazilian league, but with the Japanese league, uh, you can do that because there will be players who people will want to try out because they haven't yet been on the game. But if you see, for example, this guy here, Alves, he's going for 2,000 coins. He's actually got quite a good card, and you can probably pick him up for about 150 coins. On the web app, you may have slightly more competition, but if you just compare the prices of these players, uh, you will still be able to see, obviously, what they sell for. Gilberto there is extinct. Another player you can just put a bid on. Uh, Daniel here has got quite a good card. What is he going for? 450 coins. I can get him for 150. And you just want to spam bids on loads of these silver players. You just want to find the ones who look quite good. Basically, anyone who's got good pace, anyone who's got maybe four-star skill moves, anything like that. This guy's only 300 coins. It doesn't seem like much, but obviously, if you get him for 150, that's still going to be profit. You're still going to be doubling your coins on him. Uh, this guy here, Borchilia, what's he going for? 500 coins. And I think he's being price fixed for a bit more. So, again, a good player to bid on. This guy's got some pretty good stats, to be fair, uh, for a silver player. 750 coins. Lowest by now, just put a bid on him. This is such an easy method. It's one that I use every single FIFA, and it's helped me make a ton of coins. And this guy here, for example, he is extinct. Put a bid on him. He's actually got some decent stats there. Four-star skill moves as well. I've managed to put a ton of bids on these guys. Let's go and see, actually, on the uh, transfer targets, if I've managed to pick any of them up so far. Uh, yeah, I've managed to pick this guy here up. So as you see, just got him for 150 coins, and he will probably sell on for, like, 1,000 coins. It's towards the end of the game, so... I'm not going to list him for like 2k. Um, I could if it was earlier on in FIFA because someone would probably buy him because he's got over 70 for pace, physical and nearly defending as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be able to sell him for that. List him for like one day. And you don't have to do it with Brazil. You can do it with English players, for example, as well. 
tons of players you can put bids on and also all the uh, all the other kind of nationalities that I would recommend doing it with. Maybe not Portugal, maybe not Argentina, um, maybe not Netherlands too, but most of the other ones is good. And also you can go to, uh, not that we have it here, but you could go to the Japanese league. Now it worked with the uh, Ligo de Brazil this year because of the new players. People wanted to, uh, to kind of see what these players were like, if they were any good. So again, with new players coming into FIFA in the Japanese league, people are going to be wanting to try them out, so this method will work very, very well. Now moving on to not really a trading method. This one is a very kind of obvious thing, but it's something that a lot of people won't do. Now, if you buy FIFA points, you may end up buying like £10 worth of FIFA points every time there's a decent team of the week or something like that. It's not going to be good value for money, and it's not going to really work out for you on FIFA, because you're not going to be able to open many packs. And if you open packs towards like the middle of FIFA, players aren't going for that much. So if you do want to spend any money on the game, try and spend as much as possible at the beginning of the game, rather than maybe getting £10 of FIFA points every couple of weeks or so. Just get like £80 worth at the beginning of the game, because player prices are so high at the beginning of FIFA that it's just the best time to open packs, because you could get someone like Lukaku. He was going for about 20,000 coins at the beginning of FIFA 16. Now he's going for like 1,000. So it just makes sense to open the packs at the beginning of the game. Don't wait until a couple of weeks into the game before getting some FIFA points. If you are going to buy FIFA points, make sure that you buy them as early as possible and open as many packs as you can at the beginning of the game. So moving back to another trading method. This is another one that I used a lot at the beginning of FIFA 16. And you want to go to BPL and then you want to go gold and you want to put the minimum buy now to 350 or 400 coins. You want to swap between the two and you get a lot of great players coming up. Now, at the moment, there aren't really any players who are worth picking up. We do actually have the Westwood here for 350. He's already been picked up though. I wasn't really paying too much attention. But these cards, often they will sell for like 600 coins or so. But you can often get someone like a fullback, for example. Fullbacks in the BPL sell for quite a lot. This guy here, if I can actually pick him up, I've messed up on him. 400 coins, that is a good deal. Now this guy, if we compare his price, as you can see, he's going for around 1,000 coins. The minimum by now is 1.1k for him. Now fullbacks in the BPL often go for this, so at the beginning of the game, he could go for like 1.5k or so. You could get someone like Olsen, he's a very pacey player. Uh, someone like Kieran Trippier, all those type of players are really expensive. Uh, they'll be going for some of them nearly around 2,000 coins. Rodwell as well. That is a good deal. You just get so many players listed up because it's um, a non-rare player. People aren't really going to compare the price. And again, if we look at what he is selling for, the minimum by now is 850 coins. Uh, I'll be able to just double my coins on him. Nice and easy trading. This method works very, very well. And uh, it's one that I just definitely recommend. It's so easy because you're going to have a lot of players coming up and hardly anyone seems to use this method. I don't know if I invented it, but I never really saw anyone else using it. And I started using the beginning of FIFA 16, and it was just so effective. Got Malumbu there, I'll just compare his price. 600 coins, 500 coins, probably not the best to pick up. But uh, yeah, you just get so many players coming up on, on the uh, transfer market here. If you get fullbacks, you can get really lucky, pick them up. Maybe you could get someone like Stones. If he is a non-rare, I doubt he will be. At the beginning of the game, though, he would be selling for like 3,000 coins. You get a pacey fullback, as I said. Maybe get someone like Rojo. Um, Romero, someone like that from a big team, and maybe someone like Coquelin as well. A lot of players like that you'll be able to get very cheap, and you can make a ton of coins on them, and it's just a great trading method. So my next tip for FIFA 17 is actually going to be with the brand new cards on FIFA 17 Ultimate Team, which are going to be one to watch cards. Now, not many people know much about this because it was only talked about for a couple of minutes on EA's live stream at Gamescom, but I've done a lot of research and I've managed to find out pretty much what these cards actually are. So... At the beginning of FIFA 17, there's going to be a squad similar to a whole Team of the Week squad with, I believe, 23 players in. And these are going to be some of the best signings from this transfer window. So there's going to be the likes of Pogba, Ibrahimovic, Sane, a lot of players like that uh, that you would expect some of the bigger transfers from this transfer window. And they're all going to be in this one squad and they're going to be given a black one to watch card, which is the second card you can see on your screen right there. You can see the normal gold base card and also the first one to watch card. Now you're going to be able to get these both in packs and on the transfer market, they're going to have exactly the same ratings as the normal uh, card they're going to have the same rating and stats as you see there the first one to watch card is exactly the same rating and it has the same stats as that normal base card of Paul Pogba however if that player gets an inform that card that you have in your club the one to watch card will be boosted up so as you can see here if Pogba gets one in form he's going to be boosted up by one to an 89 rating and those stats will go up so he'll then get the stats of his inform 
on that one to watch guide if that does make sense and so on and so forth so if he does get another inform that one to watch guide that you bought at the beginning of the game is going to get boosted up again so you can kind of look at real football as well as just FIFA to kind of find players who you think are going to be good investments. Now, obviously, someone like Ibrahimovic is going to score a lot of goals. He already has, and he's likely to get a lot of informs, but people are going to know that he's going to be an obvious player, so his price is going to go up a lot. He's going to be a very expensive player, so it's going to be good to kind of find a player who you guys think is going to be uh, a player who's going to have a good season, who's going to get in forms and going to have his card boosted up, but who not everyone is going to go for. Someone who I would recommend is someone like Nolito. I'm not sure if he is going to get a one-to-watch card, but he actually plays as a striker quite a lot for City, even though his card on FIFA is a, as a winger. So people who just play FIFA and don't watch too much football in real life aren't really going to go for him. And also, he's not the quickest of player. So someone, again, on FIFA, if they're just basing on FIFA, is not really going to go for Nolito. And Nolito has already scored quite a few goals for City. He comes off the bench often for Sterling. And that could see him getting in forms uh, for scoring, for example, a late winner in a game where he does come on for Sterling. So that is definitely a good player, in my opinion, to invest in. Because if you manage to get him, he'd be relatively cheap. You get that card, uh, the one to watch card. And once he gets in forms, that will then be boosted up. And he'll be one of the best Spanish left mids on the game. So his price will be quite expensive once his pace does start going up. Because people are going to want to buy him when they see he's quite a lot quicker. Because at the moment, he's quite a slow player for a winger uh, with a uh, less than 80 pace but he will become better obviously within forms which I think he's going to get but let's say for example Martial at the beginning of FIFA 16 uh, if Martial was signed on FIFA 17 obviously there would be a one to watch card for him and that card would be quite low rated because no one really expected Martial to be as good as he actually was um, and his, his price would be quite low, but obviously he got in forms on FIFA 16. I believe he got three in forms. So if he managed to get the one to watch guard of Martial at the beginning of the game, he would have then been boosted up over time in FIFA 16. So I don't know, maybe there is a player who you guys will think uh, may do as well as someone like Martial this season who wasn't really that well known maybe at the beginning of this season here. So you never know, there could be some interesting players. I will do a video once they do officially get released, the one to watch cards on the best players to pick up um, but uh, yeah it's quite complicated hope you guys have understood and you basically just want to find kind of a hidden gem player who you guys think is going to play well over the course of next season and then if you do pick him up keep him in your club and he's going to get in forms hopefully during FIFA 17 and you can either keep him or sell him on for profit and I will actually be doing a video on the one to watch cards going into even more depth and detail on them in the following couple of days but uh, yeah that is a very very good tip for FIFA 17. So back to another trading method what you are going to want to do for this one is look for BPL fullback so I was talking about this earlier on um, but uh, you're specifically looking for fullbacks this time now at the beginning of FIFA 16 they were going for about 1000 coins so you do this right here and then you try and snipe them but as you can see there are a lot on the market right now so if you bring that price down to about 750 coins there we go there are none on the market for that so now you're going to be trying to get all these type of players here uh, that could actually be a decent deal there Jan Matt uh, he's going for about 1.2k so there we go we've already managed to get a deal Jan Matt for 800 coins uh, if you get basically any rare players using this method pick them up because you're going to be able to make coins on them so I can sell them for about 1.2 there nice bit of profit there but basically you are going to want to try and snipe fullbacks for cheaper than they're selling for because everyone is going to probably build a BPL start team. I mean, not everyone, but I'd say 90% of people will try and build a BPL start team. So um, they're going to want a fullback and that's just a, a kind of vital player. Pretty much every formation people use has a fullback in. So these players are going to sell for quite a lot. As you see, 750 coins at the end of FIFA is a lot and towards the beginning of the game it's going to be like 1,000 coins plus. Uh, it's the same for left backs as well, but you just want to try and snipe them and people were getting some crazy deals Walker was going for like 10k at the beginning of FIFA 16 people were getting him for like 700 coins So yeah, you can get some great deals people are going to be listing non rares for like 400 coins not really thinking they go for too much However, uh, people like Olsen people like Trippier uh, will sell for a lot look at that 450 coins for a Trippier There we go. Just as I mentioned his name get him for 450 and I can sell him on for about 800 coins I'd say which is a great deal right there. That just goes to show how effective this method is. And uh, yeah, you can also do it with left backs right here as well. So it's such an easy method. And what I would definitely, definitely recommend you guys to try out the beginning of FIFA 17. Next up is going to be an investing trading method. And what you want to do is invest in pacey players from good leagues, preferably the BPL. And you want to specifically go for players who people are going to want to try. You don't want, really want to get uh, players 
who don't look the best because their prices aren't going to rise up too much. You want to get players who look good uh, and uh, some of the best players for their price in their position. So I wouldn't really recommend going for someone like, uh, let's say, Kevin De Bruyne. He's going to be very expensive. But maybe get kind of a, a hidden gem kind of player. Not, not necessarily a hidden gem, but someone who's maybe 80 rated or so. Uh, who looks good, who's going to be kind of a, a mid-price player that someone might pick up for their BPL team. Also, fullbacks, for example, if you go with, uh, let's say, Kyle Walker, he's the, the fullback people are most going to want in the BPL. Uh, Walker or Bellerin, uh, left-back, you've got people like Shaw and Clichy, because people go for pace, centre-backs, people like Smalling, Koscielny, those type of players there. As I said, I wouldn't recommend going for people like Sanchez, Silva, Hazard, uh, Aguero, Costa, Ibrahimovic, Pogba, players like that. But you want to go for players kind of below about maybe 84 rated or so and you want to pick them up and you want to basically just invest in them because at the beginning of the game on the web app the player prices are going to be a lot lower than when the game actually comes out so if you pick up let's say jamie vardy right here if you got him for uh say the beginning of the game he goes for about 10k his price will rise up a lot his price will end up going up to uh, probably like 15 maybe 20,000 coins when the game comes out now Lewandowski was going for about 30,000 coins when FIFA uh, 16 came out on the web app he was going for about um, uh, 30,000 coins yeah he was on the web app he was going for 30,000 coins when the full game came out he went up to over 100,000 coins massive increase on FIFA 14 I believe Ribery was about 30k on the web app went up to uh, like 200k also very very big increase I think Ronaldo at the beginning of FIFA 15 was going for like 400k on the web app, went up to over a million when the game came out. It is crazy how much these players increased by. So uh, yeah, you don't really want to be going for players like Ronaldo and Messi though because no one's really going to have the coins. But if you do maybe pack one of them, definitely keep hold of them. But what I would recommend doing is building a concept squad with players like Walker, Bellerin, Castellani. Uh, go for BPL players, um, maybe not go for someone like De Gea in that because he's going to be very expensive, but maybe someone like Bravo who's going to be maybe 85 rated or so, someone like him. For a midfield, uh, you want to go for maybe Walcott, some pacey players like that. So you just want to go for players who are going to be quick and that you are going to be able to uh, sell on because people want to buy them. So maybe a player is really good for you, but they don't have the best of pace. That's not the type of player you want to focus on. You want to focus on players who look good just for someone who picks up the game and they want to build a BPL team and they're going to mainly look for pace. So yeah, you want to try and pick up a team of pacey players who look pretty good and uh, their prices are definitely going to rise up. And I would recommend picking up the BPL players or that you can get them from the Liga BBVA, Bundesliga, Serie A and also Liga if you do want. However, the BPL ones do rise up the most because most people will build a BPL team at the start of FIFA 17. The final tip I'm going to be giving you guys is to use the catalogue. A lot of people get to the end of FIFA and haven't even touched the catalogue and it is such a useful way of making free coins. Now what you can do is not only get the coin boost which I was talking about earlier which get you around 1,500 coins instead of about 500 coins from every single game which is awesome because you just get coins for playing the game which is very very good but you can also redeem the kits, the badges, the balls and also the um, 99 player contracts and you can sell the contract for about 1,000 coins you can sell on the uh, kits. Some of the better kits will sell on. Some of the other ones you can just quick sell though. But you can make about 10,000 coins just from all the kits available. And also you can uh, discard all the balls to make about uh, one or 2,000 coins extra as well. So you can get a lot of coins from that, which you can maybe invest into getting your star team or something like that, which is pretty cool. And there are also a couple of other things you can get in the catalog, such as loan players, which are gonna help you out and help out your club. One final thing I forgot to mention earlier on in the video is completing the manager tasks. Now, unlike on FIFA 16, where there's only one batch of manager tasks with about 20 different challenges in, on FIFA 17, there's gonna be about five of them, and so you're gonna have a lot more challenges to complete. And for each individual challenge you complete for those manager tasks, you are gonna be able to get yourself a couple of hundred coins, or maybe a silver gift pack, or even a gold gift pack, maybe a bronze one as well maybe a two player gold pack, anything like that, you're gonna get a tiny reward for completing each challenge. And once you complete the whole manager task, you're gonna get like a 15K pack or something like that, which is pretty cool. So it does get you some extra coins just for completing some easy tasks. So that is a pretty cool thing you can do to get an extra head start at the beginning of the game because some people uh, haven't really completed the manager task yet. Even at now we are towards the end of FIFA 16 because you have to challenge the team of the week and um, play offline tournaments and stuff like that, which some people may not have done 
So if you do do that, you're going to be able to get yourself some extra coins, which is always good on speed 17. So that is all of my tips. There are a couple of other ones which are fairly obvious, and that includes playing stuff like the squad builder challenges. That's just something pretty easy to do, which uh, all of you guys will probably do because you want to try that out. Uh, I would recommend playing the offline draft. That is something I did a lot at the beginning of this game. It's a great thing to do because it's going to get you a lot of coins simply from uh, playing a very easy offline draft on beginner mode because not only will you get the coins from playing games with a coin boost, but also you'll be able to get the free packs from winning the draft offline. Play on an easy difficulty and in those packs you can get some players who will sell for a lot because at the beginning of the game, player prices are a lot higher. Now on FIFA 16, I actually managed to pack myself Hummels in one of those free packs and he went for about 40,000 coins at the beginning of the game which was awesome so that is a good tip which i would recommend trying out and obviously try out the squad builder challenges i expect all of you will do that but that will get you some free coins and players and stuff like that which is not too bad but anyway i do hope you guys have enjoyed the video it's been a long one but i hope that has helped you out there will also be a link in the description down below to my instagram a brand new instagram for my youtube channel where i upload graphics gfx and different kind of uh, editing work i've done on photoshop for you guys uh, I'm also going to be selling GFX, selling thumbnails, banners and stuff like that in the near future and there'll be a link in the description to my selfie where you can also buy banners and stuff like that if you do want any uh, stuff for your YouTube channel. But anyway, I do hope you guys have enjoyed. If you do want to see any more videos like this for FIFA 17 then drop a like on the video, subscribe if you are new around here and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.